Good morning, everybody. It is 7.30 on the dot on this 12th day of March 2018. It is Monday. Happy, happy, happy Monday, Monday, Monday. All right. Um, so we're going to start reviewing our markets for a while now based solely off of the Ichimoku indicator. Now, I'm going to go back and reference my my own setup using my GAN style analysis because it'll complement what we're doing, but you don't need to do that. All we need to focus on is um, is uh, the Ichimoku system. So what we're going to do, and again, this will be recorded, is we're going to open up a brand new chart. Let's start brand new and fresh. Okay, Aussie dollar pulls up, that's fine. And what I'm gonna wanna do is, you wanna be on the hourly, so go to the, make sure you're on that one hour chart up here. You just click on whatever time frame it is and hit one hour. Okay. And then we want to add Ichimoku. So just type in I-C-H-I in the indicators and then click Ichimoku Cloud, okay? Now, if you don't remember what all these are, that's fine. Okay, don't, don't worry about that. But for right now, this is what we want. But we're going to add two more, okay? So, you know, you can click on it until you get three of these up here, okay? And so, then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the cog of the second one, okay? So, we're going to click on the cog of the second. All right? And then we are going to go to inputs, or sorry, we're gonna to go to style and we're gonna unclick everything except the plots background. And we're gonna change the plots background to the color um, orange or as close to orange as you can get, some type of orange color, okay? And then on the inputs, we're going to take all of these values and multiply them by four, all right? So nine times four, 36. And then 26, oops, 26 times four, 104. I should do that a couple times here. And then the lagging span, we're going to take that times four as, two, as well. Two oh eight. Okay. And then when you so once you've done that, hit okay. And then you should see it look like this on your screen. If you're looking at the Aussie dollar, you should just see this orange blob. All right. Now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the third one, all right? And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the other. We're going to uncheck everything except the plots background, and then we're gonna change the background of this one into like a blue. Or you can do whatever color you want, really. That's just up to you. Just so you know, and you can remember just looking at the chart that what those time zones are. And so here we're going to take all of these values by 8. Okay? So, you know, 9 times 8 is 72. Twenty six times 8 is 208. And then 52... Or I can just double the previous, either one. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And then, then you know, you click OK, and then you should see your chart look like this. Okay, so we're always going to do this off of the hourly. Okay. Now, once we have that done, 
go back to your first Ichimoku here, the night, the, the the hourly one, the nine twenty six fifty two twenty six, and let's turn off lead one, lead two. We don't need those extra lines. I like to change the lagging span to the color black, and I like to turn these lines a little thicker. So the conversion line is blue and the baseline is red. So the conversion line is the faster moving average and the, and the baseline is the slower moving average. All right. Now, when we're looking at our time frame, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a quick review of what Ichimoku is, okay? And let's bring it over to the dollar yen. So, remember that our, the rule is, is when price is in the cloud, we don't trade it. Okay, we're, you know, we're not looking to trade if it's inside the cloud. We only want to trade if it's above or below. So, if price is below the cloud, we only want to go short. If it's above the cloud, we only go, want to go long. But just because price exits the cloud, that doesn't mean we take a trade right away. We wait for this line, the lagging span, to exit the cloud as well. And if you'll, you'll notice that the lagging span is the current price action just moved back uh, 52 periods. So if we, again, if we were to take the, uh, uh, change it from candlesticks to a line, then you can see that this green line of price is the same as this black line in the lagging span. Okay, can you see that? All right. And so what we're going to want to do is we want to wait to go long until we exit the cloud. All right, actually, let's do a let's do a little replay on this here, just to uh, get a good example going. Okay. So if I'm doing a market replay, you know, and we're plotting these candlesticks, okay. So you know, we don't go short. Well, we could have gone short. Actually, we probably would have gone short there. But then we probably would have not wanted to since we're... Anyways. Okay, so now it looks like we're painting to be inside the cloud. Look at how the lagging span moves according to price. So we moved outside the cloud, but... Okay, so we're... we're we kind of touched outside the cloud. We don't want to go long yet. All right? This has not broken up above the cloud yet so, so we're gonna want to wait so we're gonna keep going it did not break above the cloud it was trading below and so we're still inside of the cloud on the lagging span the black line keep an eye on that okay now this is where we want to be looking to go long again okay this would be an entry point I'm going long why we are above the cloud we are above this conversion line, but what's most important is that the lagging span has moved out of it. Okay, so let's just watch this here. Let's keep watching. We move back in. Still above it. There we go. Now we can see what's happening here. All good signs. Then the question is, well, where do you buy in pullbacks? You buy pullbacks to the conversion of the base. As long as the conversion line is still above the base, you can buy pullbacks when they come back to the conversion line. Okay. Get rid of that. Yes. Out of the replay mode. Okay. Now, where's another place that you can find support? in here and that is the cloud itself so the cloud itself will act as support and the thicker the body of the cloud the thicker the cloud the stronger the probability that price is going to um you know, that price will find support there okay and i'd like to use <clears throat> I'd like to use an indicator the composite index I like to add that one into my trading. 
this helps me you know gauge whether this bounce is going to be uh, effective or not and so far it looks like it should be a healthy support area um, we'll see though we shall see so looking at this on the daily with and then and then as we add in our other clouds we get a better idea of what's happening here so remember the orange is the four hour cloud and the blue is the is the eight hour cloud all right Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm looking at, okay, I know I'm above the cloud on the daily and it looks like I'm finding support on the cloud or on the hourly. It looks like I'm finding support on that hourly cloud. Where else am I finding support? It looks like, looks like I'm finding some support on the top of the cloud of the four hour as well. So this seems to be a good, strong, supportive, area for now well not not like a good and strong one but it is a it is a good bias for having a supportive buy entry why because the cloud of the four hours thick and so is the cloud of the one hour however i am below the eight and look what happened to price when it got into the cloud of the eight it got rejected but as i'm looking at the future price action here you know we are within this value area of the eight hour all right, so I'm comfortable taking a long at this area. I have a good probability I have a good probability of a positive trade going up from here. Why wouldn't I have a positive trade outlook? Well, there is a reason why I wouldn't have one, and that's because the conversion line crossed below the baseline, and as we've traded below it, we found resistance here, okay? So this signifies that this trend is weakening. When you start to see price touch below the baseline you then you start to see some weak that that's that's some observable weakness within the trend okay i forgot to mention that the cloud the cloud is the is the conversion line in the baseline thrust forward 26 periods on the hourly and then the inside of it is is colored into the what we call the cloud the kumo and and really it's colored green when the conversion line is above the base and red when the when the base is below the convert when the base is when the conversion line is below the base okay so that is our that's what we're looking at here you know the the lagging span on the hourly is above the one hour cloud still so that is bullish but right now we are sitting in a in a, uh, uh, an area where that we would consider buying a support. It's not the best on the oscillator, best buying zone on the oscillator because we're above both moving averages here. However, we're not in this super overbought conditions. So this to me is a valid trade. And question is, where do you put your stops? You put your stops below the cloud. So if my entry is 161, my stop is going to be below the cloud. So you, you, you sometimes, if you want to, you can manually move your stop up, but you never move your stop down. You can move it along with the cloud as price adjusts. All right. Now, let's look at the euro. <coughs> we had a euro short last Friday at 123. 123 even and that's you know we're kind of sitting within that value area right now now looking at our euro trade i like being short here look what happened is we fell short we fell below the hourly lagging spans below it and we started to trade where we but we got price couldn't go any higher it got stopped below the cloud of the eight hour and the one hour and i was finding a tiny bit of support maybe on the um, 
on the uh, 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 four hour. This whole action, look at the clouds here. This is very consolidative. This is like a Bollinger Band squeeze, okay? So we don't like to trade when price is inside the cloud. But for the time being, because we found rejection at the eight and the one, and we like to trade off the hourly, okay? So this is a good shorting area. So this is a good short. And because we found, we found a resistance up here, especially, you know, when you see the oscillator in overbought conditions and it's right up against the cloud, you have good chances of it, of it, of it finding resistance and that's, and then good, good opportunity to short. So we, it would have been nice to short right there. Additionally, if we don't want to short there, we could short at a pullback. Could short at a pullback to 123.15. That is an option as well. Okay. Uh, gold. We had a gold trade. Now this is looking pretty bearish to me. This is looking like a nice setup. So we have we're below the eight hour, we're below the four, and we are below the one. All right, now, um, as we're looking at this, so last last Friday we had a short at 1325. Hold short from 1325 on Thursday, or add on a pullback to that zone. Um, so that 1325 trade is working out pretty nicely here. And we're looking at, you know, what is our, what does our trade opportunity say? Well, we want to short on a pullback to really this 1318.47. What did I say? 13? Actually, 1319. Ah, dang it. Or That's what really, or, you know, or just, you know, whenever price gets back to the conversion line, the baseline or the cloud here, that's where we would want to go short. We do have a little bit of supportive buying structure here. We might, we may be looking at a pullback of some sort, probably to this one hour, four hour cloud. But for the time being, we can still look, look at the short moving along here. And then we had a trade. The other trade on Friday was the New Zealand dollar. We wanted to go short on the New Zealand dollar. And that did not pan out. We just caught a lot of buying over the uh, over last night. But where did we find resistance? We found resistance in the eight hour cloud here. Got into it, hit it, and now we're going below it. So we're not looking to go long because we got rejected and uh, we haven't found support on this area uh, we're i'm kind of holding now we could consider buying long if we get a bounce here we'll have to see <clears throat> so there's really and because we're inside the clouds here we're inside the eight the four we're above the four and the, and the one where, where price is trading inside this zone so this is not a place that I'm looking to go long at all right now. Pound dollar. Okay, so the pound dollar, we're inside the four hour cloud. We have not yet, the, the lagging span has not yet broken out. So we don't have a trade yet. We don't have a trade here. Euro pound. Ooh, nice fall over in price there. <clears throat> So on the euro pound, we're going to want to look for a pullback, you know, to the conversion and the baselines. 
you know, or the cloud. So we're looking at trading pullback to the 8877 zone. Okay. And we're going to more than like, and here's the deal about clouds that are very thin, do not have a lot of strength. So, and when prices break through thick clouds, that is a strong indication of a strong move. When you look at clouds, especially this is the eight hour cloud, look how thin this cloud is. That is not a strong supportive area. That is not a strong supportive area at all. Okay. US dollar, Canadian dollar. So where, where are we at here? We are, we are above the one hour here, but then we've consolidated. And now we started to trade below. Where did we find some support? We found some support within the four hour cloud here. Okay. Found some support. That's telling. That's, that's telling us something. Um, and we want to look at how to trade it. But because we are below the one hour cloud, all right, and we are, you know, we cross up above the conversion, um, we're, we can look to short um, the 128.48 area. But then if we start to trade inside the cloud, we don't want to participate. <clears throat> and, you know, because we have such a strong moving trend here, um, like if we're looking at the eight hour, we should look at if we fall below the cloud here, the four hour cloud, we should look at price to continue to fall until we get to the eight hour before we find support. Okay. But the one hour and the four hour, they're all kind of sitting inside of one another here right now. But on the one hour, we do have a short opportunity when we get pulled back up there. Aussie dollar yen. Where did we find resistance? At the eight hour cloud bottom of the eight hour cloud and we are looking a little toppy here and we're not getting a supportive buy signal in our well we do I guess kind of have a supportive buy signal <clears throat> so we have a couple buy opportunities there long at the present value of 8382 or pull back to um, 0.8367 or 8367 or pull back to the cloud here, which, you know, we could really say that this is going to be in the value range of the 8364 or sorry, um, 8339. Okay, conversion line or the 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 uh, lagging span, the dark line is well above the one hour. So let's look to see and and trade this opportunity because we've got a supportive buy signal down here. The U.S. dollar, Swiss, the Swissy. Um, looking at this trade, in our oscillator, we are looking at. Um, we're kind of extended above our averages here, but, and, and we are, you know, uh, this isn't a very great entry area. The only time I'm going to want to go along here is if we trade and cross above, because we're going to be entering the cloud here, maybe. So we're only going to want to look to go long now when we cross above the base. So we're looking at 95.11. Okay, but again, there is strong supportive area here just based on our cloud, looking at our cloud, looking at our Ichimoku system. There is a strong supportive buying area here. Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar. 
let's let's kind of take a peek at all these. Okay, so we may have a good trade on this guy. We want to look to make sure the lagging span. So we want to see if we're going to get the lagging span to break above the one hour cloud. So when will that happen? We're looking probably at 110 or sorry, 1.01, .01, 1.01. .01. That's what we want to see the lagging span do. Okay. Uh, probably not going to get out. Oh, well, we might. The euro as a dollar. We'll want to go short on a pullback. There's a couple pullback areas. We, so we can short on pullbacks to 156.56. And then looking at this value area here, 156.81. And now, yeah, those are the good ones. We'll keep those there. Looking at some, at some pairs we have not looked at. We always want to look for different trade opportunities. Euro, Canadian dollar. So now it looks like it's finding some support on the four hour cloud. Okay. Looks like it might be finding some support on the four hour cloud. You're going to kind of want to keep an eye on this. Okay. Let's go over these. Let's, let's look at these trades real quick. Actually, we'll come back to them. Let's look at what happened to our cryptos over the weekend. You know what? We'll do that with. Uh, we'll do that with. Uh, Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin! Now, Bitcoin had a little bit of a sell-off over the weekend here and last week too. I mean, we, you know, ever since the fifth, you know, we've had, you know, about we had seven days of down pressure. All right. Now I'm looking at the cloud. I'm looking at. Uh, what, what's happening with our trading pattern here. So we are above the one hour. We're approaching the four and the eight hour value area. But, you know, we're, we're struggling to get to this 10,000 area. That's going to be the hard point to get to. Um, you know, we are looking at a little bit of divergence. A little bit of divergence here uh, with our oscillator. And our price, you know, when we have um, lower high, we have a lower high in our oscillator, and we have a higher high in price that is regular bearish divergence. We'll see how much that holds. Litecoin, you know, Litecoin is is uh, find, finding some pressure up against this four hour cloud. Still above the one hour. Lightning span is above the one hour. That's healthy. Ethereum. Ugh, gosh, this is such a boring trader. But, I mean, it's got... It's still long biased on the pullback to the conversion or the base. Um, you know, we're obviously entering like a bit of a consolidated range here again. Now let's take a peek at our trades that we were looking at earlier. So the... Gold trade, we want to short at a pullback to 1319. We're probably maybe gonna see that play out here. Get a pullback to 1319. This this zone is where we'll want to enter short again. Euro dollar. You know, as we're getting to the close of eight o'clock here. Um, Euro dollar, we want to short at 122.94, where we were just at down here, or uh, pull back to 123.15. So we're looking in this value area to go short. Dollar yen. We are really sitting right on this on this zone and have not moved far from it. You know, the close is 
This candlestick is going to close in three seconds. And um, and I'm getting a alert on the UCAD to short it. One second. <clears throat> I know we had that as a short opportunity. So what are we looking at here? Uh, US, we wanted to short on a pullback to 128.48. We're not quite there. So I'm looking to wait to see you know what happens as we get up to these zones. You know, or we can short when price crosses below the conversion line on UCAD. So. So that's like at 128.10. Okay, going back. So we did uh, the gold, euro, pound. What are we looking at here? We want to go short at a pullback to 88.77. Around this area, we might have to wait to see that play out. Um, AD, JPY, AJ. We were, were looking to go long again at 83.82. Or a pullback to 83.67. So we're down in this area or even lower on, on the base of the, uh, the top of the uh, one hour cloud. Okay, so that's what we're taking a peek at. <clears throat> okay. So those are our trades for the day. Um, they should be fairly, fairly useful. Uh, you know, this is nice thing about Ichimoku is you don't have to think about it a lot. You do have to think, but it's not like a whole lot because we've got a lot of various uh, ways to look at the market, a lot of various ways to observe um, how to trade it. And, you know, we can just get a lot of great trades out of a out of a, uh, a, a strong um, type of trading system, like the Ichimoku system. Now the pound, we did not do the pound dollar, did we? Yeah, yeah, we didn't want to do it because we were, when did that thing shoot up? Was that like literally within the past few minutes? Yep. Oh, not the daily. Okay. I will sometimes. I mean, then we end up having a lot of crap on our screen, but do it daily. And you take all these inputs times 24. So we are right inside that daily. And you can always hide these. You know, if I want to know, well, where am I at in relation to the daily? I just click it, hide it. All right. Okay. So that is our trading opportunities for the day. And, you know, let's see how they play out. Let's observe how they trade going into tomorrow. And again, as you're trading throughout the day, remember this one thing, don't trade when prices sitting inside the cloud. And we only want to leave if price is inside the cloud and we're looking for a breakout. We only want to take those trades when the lagging span breaks above or below the cloud. Okay? That is how we want to trade this. And actually on USDJPY, the other pullback zone is in the cloud here at like 106. Okay, so those are some other opportunities. 
We'll see if it wants to hold that at all. Okay. Cool, cool. Guys, have a great start to your trade week. Have a great, uh, um, you know, beginning uh, of the of the week. Let's get some good trades in. Let's keep our heads on straight and uh, not get frustrated when we have losing trades because losing trades are just part of the. That's just part of the job. This is a career. This is your job. It's your money. So don't waste it on emotion. Okay. You guys have a great day, and we'll talk with you all tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.